This is the Power BI report that we are going to produce from the data that we have. It has two pages. If I click on the navigation, it takes us to the next page. So we have home and best worst sellers. We are going to start from scratch with the data. We are going to analyze the data and then we are going to create a report just like this one. In front of us now here we have the data that we are going to use today and it's contained in four files we are going to load this file into sql server 2022 and then we're going to explore it the first thing i'm going to do is to create a new database and i'll simply right click on databases new database and we call this pizza sales then click ok and we have it here on the left side you can see it next we are going to click right click on it tasks import flat file browse order details double click on it click next next you're going to make this an int you're going to make the order details as int and this one is also going to be int and you're going to make the order details id the primary and we click next and then finish that one has been inserted so right click on pizza sales tasks import flat file browse double click on orders next next the order id will be primary key this is date and time and you're going to convert this into int i think we should use that then you click next and finish the data has been inserted and we are going to close this we repeat the same process right click on sales pizza sales tasks import flat files browse pizza types double click on it next next all these are envirchar and you have a pizza type id which you're going to make the primary key next and finish that one is also inserted successfully we close it then right click on pizza sales tasks import flat file browse we double click on pizzas next next we make pizza id the primary key the rest the rest will remain the same click next and we finish the data has been inserted so now we'll go to pizza sales right click on it refresh then we expand and we go to tables and we have all our tables here now we can go ahead and start playing with our data okay so now we can explore our data the first thing I'll do is start a new query. I'm going to start with use pizza sales. That will tell Microsoft SQL Server to just use this database from this point on. These are the questions that we have. We have a total of 12 questions, five up here. These are the KPIs, key performance indicators. The total revenue, total order value, value total pieces sold, total orders, and average pizza the number of pizza per order and then we have several questions that you'll need to answer the daily trends hourly trends and then percentage of sales by category and by pizza size and then total pizzas sold by pizza category then the top five best sellers and the top bottom or the worst five worst sellers after this after we answer the questions then we are going to present the data on Power BI. Let's start with the first one, total revenue. Before we start with the total revenue, let's take a look at each table and see what they contain. So select star from, let's start with order details. Let's see how that looks like. We execute. So we have order details, simply order details. Next, there will be table orders so we simply check these orders let's see how this one looks like again so orders we have the date and time then pizza types these are simply the pizza types and the pizza type id you remember it was envirchar this was the reason because this is text not integers okay last is pizzas so we have pizza ID, pizza type ID, and here we have the price and the size. The price 
is important that's coming from pizzas now we'll be able to explore our data further okay first question let's calculate the total revenue we already have in front of us pizza and we can see this is where the price is let's explore order details again the order details we get the order id and you also get the quantity so we are going to join order details and pizza so from order details s o join we don't have to specify what kind of join we simply need everything from each table so simply join pizzas call that p on on the pizza id equals p dot pizza id let's run this first and see how this looks like so now we have the order details here we have the quantity and the price and the order details let's order by the quantity descending okay so we have a quantity of four and a price of 2075 we have to make sure that a quantity of four does not cost 2075 it doesn't look likely to me this looks like the price of one pizza 2075 and i think it will be four times 2075 so let's run another query here select everything from pizzas where pizza id equals big meat s now notice that the price here is 12 dollars and we have a quantity of four if we run this query execute you can see that we still have a price of 12 even though this is just one in that case if you run this query again we have to multiply the quantity by the price to get the total value so now we can do we can do we can complete this query so it's going to be select remember we are looking for total revenue select sum and this is going to be the quantity the quantity times price if you execute this let's remove this one for now i don't need it if you execute that's the total revenue so as total revenue let's put this as total revenue and we can round this by into two so round two if you run this again this is the total revenue in dollars i'm going to save this as let's call it one kpi total revenue save our next question what is the average order value which is going to be the total order value divided by the order count since we already saw the revenue up here we already know that this is going to come from this these two tables so i always start, like to start with the from and i'll go to select star from these tables execute so we have our our tables here and we need the total order value divided by the order count so we are going to do sum total order value will be quantity times price and then we are going to divide this by the order count that is the count of order ids this one here so we'll do count uh this have to be distinct order ids and we call it average over order value if we run this this is the average order value 38 point this we can round this all by two so now if we run this the average order value is 38 dollars and 31 cents so our save results as to kpi average order value total pizza sold that's our next question and this will be let's start with select star from let's look at order details execute so you have this quantity here and this is where that will give us our number so it's going to be simply sum of quantity we call this as total pizza sold we run this these are the total number of pizzas sold i'll save this as three kpi total pizzas total pizza sold 
next question total orders let's select star from order details let's take a look how this looks like now in this case we are going to count the order ids so select count order id this has to be distinct we call this total orders we run it these are the total orders 21350 save this as for kpi total orders next one is average pictures per order this will come from order details we start with select order details in order to calculate this we are going to need pizza sold divide by the number of pizza sold and how we are going to calculate this is select sum of the quantity down here we divide by the count of order ids so count distinct order ids order id as average pizzas per order if we run this We run it so the average pizzas per order is two i'll save this as average pizzas per order okay so now we can answer our questions and the first question is what are the daily, daily trends for total orders the orders are going to come from orders the table orders this one here first let's select everything from orders and we want the daily trends so what you'll do here is to get the day out of the date and how you'll do this is to use a function called format the date and this is going to be formatted as ddd or the day and you call this let's call it day of week next you use count distinct order id here we are simply counting the number of orders for each day and you call this total orders we are going to group by we can group by date but let's just group by this we order by total orders descending let's run this query and see how it looks like now so friday has the highest number of orders sunday has the lowest i'm going to save this as question one total orders next question is what are the hourly trends for total orders again this is going to come from the table orders select star from orders let's keep it down there so we can see what you're working with and now we need hourly which is going to come from this column here time so you're going to use a function called date part and you're going to use hour. that's the one we need from the time column as let's call this hour of course now we need to count the unique order ids in order to find the number of orders so just like we've done before count distinct order id now we need to group by let's group by this and we order by the hour so count so order by hour count distinct there is an error here that comma is not supposed to be there so everything looks good let's run this and we call this count as count we run this again i'm going to save this as question two hourly trends the next question is to calculate the percentage of sales by pizza category just to clarify what you're going to do here you're going to calculate the total revenue for each category and then you are going to divide that by the total revenue and then of course you're going to multiply by 100 to get the percentage so the first thing is to calculate the total revenue by category so this will be coming from two tables we can actually do a mini query here and check let's check pizza first this is getting the price let's check all the details this is where we are getting the quantity and the order ids that's good let's check pizza type you're getting the pizza type id and we're getting the category which is important for us here so this will actually come from three tables you're going to use uh, pizza types pizzas 
and other details in our query so this will come from peters sp we join peter types spt on peter type id equals pt dot peter type id then we join all the details as od on od uh, peter id equals p dot peter id let's take a look at how this looks like so we need pizza category which will come from category down here so we select category and the sum of the quantity quantity times price as let's call this revenue group by category now we need the second one here the total revenue so this will be sum just like this one sum of the quantity times price times a hundred we divide by the total revenue and we are going to calculate the total revenue this way as a sub query so select sum quantity times price from pizzas let's call this p2 and we join all the details as od2 on od2 pizza id equals p2 dot pizza id again and we call this as percentage sales let's run this and see how this looks like I'm missing a comma there so we have the revenue and percentage sales now we can round this by two so round let's run this and see how that looks right now so percentage we can order by percentage sales percentage sales descending let's run this and now we can see that classic is a category that has the highest percentage sales all the way down to VG. I'm going to save this as question 3 percentage sales next question is percentage sales by pizza size this one is just like the, the last question except in this case we're going to replace the category with a pizza size so copy and paste and this will become size and we're going to group here by size if we run this the large has the highest number of percentage sales i'm going to save this as question four percentage sales size save the next question is the total pizza sold by pizza category uh, this one is going to come from three tables it's going to come from pizzas pizza types and order details this is actually just like question three so i'll scroll back up to question three and take this join save us some typing let's select star from those tables and see how they look like everything we need is here so we need the total pizza sold by category so we start with category and then we need the sum of the quantity as quantity sold so we have the quantity and we have the category we have to group by category Let's see how this looks like now we can order by the quantity sold this all sum descending let's take a look at it again execute so classic has the highest number of pizza sold all the way down to chicken i'm going to save this as question five quantity sold 
Next question, the top five best sellers by Toto Pizzas sold. Again, this is going to come from our three tables. So I'll just copy and paste and let's select everything. Select star from that query so we can see what you're working with. So here we need the quantity, this one, and we need the pizza, this one. So we need the name and the quantity. So select name and the quantity will be the sum of the quantity as total pizza sold. We group by name and we order by total pizza sold. Let's do descending. Here we have a random. This is descending. Now we need the top five. So we are going to select top five. Let's run it again. And here we have the top five pizzas. I'm going to save this as question six, top five. Save. Our last question is the bottom five or the worst sellers by total pizza sold. Actually, this is just going to use this query here. So we copy and paste. In this case, instead of order by ascend descending, we are going to order ascending. Now, if you run this, our top five are going to be the lowest five. Execute. And you can see uh, brick career pizza all the way up. So these are the bottom five pizzas. I'm going to save this as question seven, bottom five, save. So here we have Power BI open. I'll start with uh, customizing our dashboard. Then we are going to import the data that we need. So the first thing I'll do here is insert shapes. I'll take this one, a rectangle. I'll expand it to the end, both ends, resize it. That should be good enough. Then I'll come to format, shape, style. Then the fill color here, I'm going to use this blue, this one here. From here, I'm going to import the first set of data. So I'll go to home, get data, text CSV, and our first this was the the first total revenue double click on it load after a short delay it loads and you can see see it here on the right uh it's ro loaded i can expand it and you can see that it has one column so what i'm going to do here is to upload or import all the data that we saved in the first uh, section then we'll continue from there Okay, so I've gone ahead and uh, imported all our data. Remember that you need to answer these questions. The first section is the KPIs. The second sec sec section is these seven questions. So let's go ahead and uh, start with the KPIs. I'm going to use this card. Double click on it. This uh, new card. Double click on it. And for now, I'll just uh, leave it there. I'll come to the first one. Column one. Click on it. And I'm going to rename this. So you just cl click on the arrow, rename for this visual, and I'll rename this total revenue. Enter. Then I'll go to the next one, check it, rename, average order value. Enter. I'll go to the third one, check it, rename, total pizzas sold. I'll go to the fourth one, check it, rename, total orders. I'll go to the fifth one, check it, rename, average pizzas per order. Now we have our cards here. It's time to format, customize them, customize them to make sure that they look the way we want. I'm going to bring them up here. That should work. Okay, a little smaller. Then I'm going to come here, format your visual. I'll start with the shape, rectangle. I'm going to use a rounded rectangle and I'm going to make this 10 pixels so you can see that our re re rectangles are rounded but not too rounded next I'll go to the layout 
uh, this should be good horizontal and the space between cards looks good to me this is that is this space here looks good to me the call out the values uh, we're using the font size 45 DIN I'm going to leave it at that that font but I'm going to reduce this a little bit to 40 I'm gonna use the same blue color that we used before the labels should be on the labels are these ones here if I turn this off you can see they go off so the label should be on I'll use Sego semi bold and I'll use the font size 14 the color I'm going to use this one here and the position is going to be below you can see it looks a little better I'll go back to the values and I will center them that way now we need to format the cards notice here that you can select one card or all of them I'll select all for now you're going to put a shadow let's put it on you can see now there is a shadow but I'm going to offset it from the inside instead of the outside it's going to be the inside so you can see that uh, it's kind of it looks better and spread out I'm going to put a glow as well again it's going to offset from the inside and I'm going to use this color over here or we could use a different color let's use a blue a little bit of blue see how it looks like yeah I'll leave it with a light blue color next we're going to enable an accent bar so if you turn this off the accent bar is what you see on the left here again I'm going to use our blue color this one and I'm going to increase the, the size to 3 pixels I mean 5 pixels we can leave it at 4 I'll leave it at 4 for now maybe you're going to make some changes I think I should spread it a little bit looks better that way for now I'm going to leave this like this uh, one more thing we come to general effects background should should be turned off that looks good to me okay next I'm going to format format our canvas here I'll come to insert shapes this time I select rounded rectangle I'm going to resize this and come to format the shape it should be 10 percent then we come to style the color will be white and put a glow and put a glow of let's use this color so we're going to use border transparency of 80 percent there's no shadow and there's a glow that's how the text box looks like before we, before I continue I'm going to click outside the box or click outside our new uh, rectangle shape click outside then I'll go come to format your your visual I want to set the canvas background here to this color over here I'm going to change the transparency I think around I think around 20% should be good we just type 20% and that looks good to me then I'll come to canvas settings instead of using 16 by 9 I'm going to use custom this is going to be 850 by 1500 then I'll come back and I'll copy paste so I have a new one there then I'll copy paste I'm going to have three down here one two three now I'll resize these ones just something that looks even I think this looks good I'm going to uh, work with them like this if we do need to modify them then we'll do so okay now I'll come back to our first section our KPIs and I'm going to come to visual image I'm going to enable image browse 
now this I have to select which image so the total revenue the first one this one here browse receive my images under images folder and we're going to select this one position should be top now I can position should be top the size should be 35 and they should be one pixel I'll go to the next one average order value browse select the second one position will be top padding will be one pixel the size will be 35 I'll go to the third one total pizza sold I'll browse double click on it position top one pixel 35 pixels then I'll go to the fourth one total orders browse total orders I change this to one pixel and this will be 35 and the position will be top lastly I select average pizzas per order browse average double click on it position will be top this is one pixel 35 pixels I think this looks good they are correctly positioned everything looks perfect now the next thing I'm going to insert I'm going to insert a text box this text box will contain our title which will be Peter sales report I will center this I will use Sejo bold and I'm going to use 32 resize it a little bit and I'll drag it up next I'll come to the properties effects and remove the background I'll select the text and you're going to use white text then I'll insert an image here so I'll come to insert image I take a picture image resize it then I'll move it over here that looks good to me I'll leave it like that for now now we can answer the first question I'm going to use start column chart for this one double click on it and I'll just drag it over here resize it then I'll go to data go to question one the y axis will take the values and the day will be on the x axis so next we'll format our visual so we come to format your visual I'll start with the columns the color I'm going to use a function and this one will be a dark blue our dark blue over here and we can use we can use this one looks good let's see how it looks like click OK then you can see that we have a legend over here so we need to remove that this one turn it off and that will go away now we come to the x-axis we need the values but you don't need the title the title is this one day so just turn it off then we come to the y-axis we don't need the values we're going to turn on the editor labels and we need the title we can call this sum of total orders actually we can we can turn this off then we go down to data labels turn them on the values we can use the semi bold sejo 11 let's try to off let's see how that looks like let's just stick with two off let me resize it now you can see that this is friday thursday saturday wednesday tuesday there's no order if you try to sort from here sort axis you can see that it's uh, done by the sum of total orders or you can try the day if you try the day wednesday tuesday thursday sunday it's doing it in alphabetical order so again this will not work what i'm going to do is i'll go to data this is question one this is how it looks like we have the days of the week and the total orders i'll go back to this one here and then i'll transform data under home transform data transform data the data we need to transform is this one add column conditional column And you're going to call this week number or day number 
so if the column day equals Sunday you're going to call this one Monday two Tuesday three Wednesday four Thursday five Friday six Saturday seven you click OK and you can see that now we have a new column over here I'm going to sort this ascending then I'll come back home close and apply now when you come here you can see that we have day number the next thing we need to do is to come and select day and you'll see that we now have a new tab column tools so I'll just come here sort by column and I'm going to select the day number, the one that we just created. And now you can see it's resorted itself Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, all the way through Saturday. All I need to do is to click here, sort axis, sort ascending. And now we have Sunday to Saturday, just the way we wanted it. Now the next thing, of course, we're going to go back to the visual general title and I'll call these daily order trends daily order trends or order trends by day I'll choose to go semi bold 19 center I can expand it a little bit I also need to go to general effects turn off that background well, that looks good we go to the next question or the next uh, visual so that was question one question two is the hourly trends for this I'm going to use a line chart this one here double click on it expand it so the data the hour is going to come to the x-axis and the orders will come to the y-axis then I'll go to format let's start with the x-axis here we're going to change this from continuous to categorical the values this one's here let's try to increase the font size a little bit that looks good enough we don't need the title it's already represented in the main title we go to the y-axis I'm going to remove the values and I'm going to remove the title because the title will be presented in the main title over here and the grid lines we can put the markers and we put let's put this purple for the markers we turn on the data labels we go to general title we call these hourly order trends as usual we change this to schedule semi bold 19 center effects we remove the background we go back to the visual the lines the colors you're going to use this I like this better or maybe you can use something less less colorful like this one here that looks better to me so here we have 9 10 to 23 but they are not in order so what you can do here is to sort axis we sort by the hour and we say and we saw it ascending so it's starting from 9 10 12 all the way and now we can tell that 12 and 1 p.m. is when we have most orders and then right here from 5 to 6 again or 5 to 7 I would say again we have a peak in the number of orders I think this looks good to me I can expand it a little bit that looks good to me the next question question three 
I'm going to use a donut chart. So I'll right double click on this donut chart here. Drop over, resize it. And now the values will go there and the category will go to the legend. So we have a category legend here. Then we're gonna go to format your visual. The legend, it looks good to me as far as I can tell. We can try to increase the text a little bit, but I think I should just leave it the way it is because it's taking space for the visual. Detail labels will be on. Detail labels are the ones that this one's, this one's around the chart. Position is outside, just like they are. In the values, we can increase the font size a little bit. I think we have space there. Let's try Sejo Semi Bold. I think that looks good. Then I'll go to General. I'll go to the title and I'll call this Percentage Sales by Category. This will be Sejo Semi Bold 19 Center. If I can expand this a little bit just to make sure it fits. And I'm going to go back to Effects and I'm going to remove the background. Then everything fits properly. I'll resize it a little bit. And that looks good to me. Our next visual is for question four. For this one, I'm going to use a pie chart. Just position it, resize it. And for this one, I'm going to put the percentage sales under values and the pizza size at the legend. And this is what we have now. Format visual. The legend looks okay to me. The slices. Again, I'm not going to change anything on the colors and so on. The data labels or the detail labels, we can increase the font size here to 11. Just like the other one, I think this looks good. Next we go to general, then we go to the title, and the title would be percentage sales by Peter size. See Joe semi bold, 19, and we sent it. I think that looks good to me. Then we are going to remove effects. You go to effects and then we remove the background. The title looks a little too crumpled here. I'm going to reduce it. So I'll go to format your visual. I'll select it again. Then format your visual. General. Title. I'll make this 18. Let's see how that looks like. That looks better. I'll leave it like that. Before we go to our next one, the, our next uh, visual, I'm going to select this, copy and paste, then I'll put it up here to the side because you're going to need it. Just res resize it. Now for our next visual, I'm going to use this funnel chart, double click on it and I'll drag it over, resize it. This will be question five. The values will go to the total pizza sold in the category will go there. Now we'll go to format your visual. We start with the colors because they are the first ones here. And I'm going to use conditional formatting. So I'll click on this. The highest color, I'm going to use our deep blue, this one here. Or maybe I can use this blue. Our lowest, let's try a purple. We we'll try a purple like that one. And we can also add a middle value color let's see how this works for now i'll leave it like that we load it i think this looks good i'll just leave the colors like that the data labels are already on but i want to turn these values into real values so the label contents will be the data value we'll leave it like that the values again we can increase the size a little bit the display units let's say none and now we can we can see the actual numbers of the orders. So that's all we have to do with the values, the background. So we turn on that's the data labels. Now the category labels, they are on. I believe the category labels are the classic, supreme, and so on. Yes, they are. We can just leave it, leave them the way they are. Maybe we can increase the font size a little bit, but that's eating into the our the, the the size of our chart so we leave them like that conversion rate labels i'm going to turn those off that will give us more space this one here i'm just going to turn those off and at least we get a we get some more space then we go to general title and we'll call this peters sold by 
category again let's use Sergio semi bold 19 and we center it pizza sold by category what was the title then effects we remove the background and we have to resize a little bit to bring it back inside that looks good I think this looks good the way it is and I'll just leave it like that before we move on to our next page for the next set of visuals I would like to fix a few things on this page I'm sure you probably noticed that uh, for example this one doesn't fit we also have another one here I'll select this visual I'll go to format your visual these are the labels yes those are the labels we expand it we reduce the size by one now we can see everything here I'm gonna leave it like that I think that looks good enough then we'll go to this column up here and I'm going to add some summary so what I'll do is I'll come to insert shapes I'll take uh, this one here move it over here you know I'll resize it and then under format I'll format the shape and I'll make this 10% the rounded corners 10% I'll come to style this will be our title let's make it our theme color the blue I'll reduce its size here you notice that it has gone behind our column so what I'll do here just a little bit I'll click on it bring it to the front then I'll go to format bring forward bring forward or I can also do bring bring to the front now I can go in and make any edits then I'll go again to insert and this time text box drag it I'll resize it to fit in there I'll call this busiest days and hours this will actually be white so I'll go back to properties effects and it will have no background then I'll increase the size here let's try 12 it's too big let's try 10.5 maybe you can try a different font let's try Cambria 12 bold let's try 11 and that works well now all I need to do is to resize it I'll also resize our container here maybe that should do it just a little bit more I wanna reduce this a little bit that should work I'll come back to insert text box again I'll drag it down here resize it and here I'll type busiest days are Thursday Friday Saturday hours peak hours peak hours are 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. then 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. I'm going to style this it should be bold then our we can first increase the font size let's try 11 12 I think I'll go with 11 that's bold I'll bold that I'm going to use this color here again I'll bold this and use the same color okay I'll go ahead and uh, copy this then paste and move it down here I'll come to insert text box drag it down here in fact I'll remove the background and the title here will be sales I'll use a font color of white this would be 12 let's use 11 let's use 12 this would be 12 bold you can try 14 center this was Cambria 11 so let's match this it's Cambria 11 you can probably increase the size to 12 or even 14 you can increase the size to 14 and I'll come back here for a new text box I'll drag it over resize it like that effects I'll remove the background and I'll say classic pizza has the highest sales large size pizza have the highest sales I'll increase increase the font size again here this is a Joe 11 
UI 11. So I'll match it here. So do UI 11. Classic pizza. I'll bold it. I'll use the same font color. Again, I'll bold it and change the color. So far, I think this page looks good enough. We have all the charts and we have a small summary of what to expect here. Now I can go ahead and uh, right click on this, duplicate, then we are going to modify this page for the next charts. Okay, for us to use this page, I'll need to remove these boxes, these charts. I'll resize these boxes. For question six, I'm going to use a stacked bar chart. Double click on it, drag it and resize it. So this will be question six. The number sold will go to the X axis and the pizza type will go to the Y axis. Uh, we come to the visual, we start with the Y axis, we remove the title, we come to the X axis. We do need the values, we don't need the titles. No, we don't need the values either. You're gonna use data labels instead. The values here, the position here will be inside end. Let's come to the bars first. I'll use conditional formatting, so I'll click on FX. This time we can use some green. It looks good to me. And for this one, we can use our blue. We could put a middle color. Let's try this one the way it is. I think this looks good enough, but you're going to have to remove this legend. This one here, remove it. You go to general, title. This will be top five best selling pizzas. So you semi bold 19 center. That's the title, effects. We come and remove the background. Now we need to fix these percentages. For some reason, the data labels here are showing as percentage. And if you mouse over it, you can see there is, it has a number and a percentage. And I want the number to be displayed. So what I will do here is this is data labels. I'll come to the visual, data labels, under options, I'll go to values, sorry. And I'll turn on, turn on the custom label. Then I'll add data, you know, on question six. And I'll use our data here. And you can see now we have the real numbers. So everything looks good to me and I'll leave it like that. Okay, our last visual will be the same clustered bar chart. Double click on it, drag it, resize it. Then for the Y axis, I'll use pizza. The number sold will be the X axis. Now format your visual. We start with the Y axis. We remove the values. Oh, sorry. We need the values. We don't need the title. Then X axis. We don't need the title, we don't need the values. Data labels, we need them. Do we need to position them? I think that looks better. Then we go to general, title, bottom five, worst selling pizzas, 19, center. That's the title. I wanna go back to the visual, go back to the data labels and the values and increase the size a little bit. I'll increase the size of, I think that will look better. I'll go back to general, effects i'll remove the background now i'll go back to visual i'll go to the bars and i'm going to use a function for the colors so the rules format style this would be a gradient this is question seven the number sold so the first one here we can use we can try the pink and we can try the purple we can use a middle color. Let's try it like that. Or we try a different middle color. Let's see how this one looks like for first of all. Now we have the values, but I think we need uh, to play with it a little bit more. We need to remove the legend. Here we can enter a custom value, 935. Let's see how that works. I think that will look better. So we have the, the problem is that these values are cl so close together that it's taking the same color. Uh, but I think this will be able to differentiate the, between the, the four values, the five values. I think this looks good to me and I'm just going to leave it the way it is. 
Next, I'm going to rename these two tabs. I'll right click on it, rename. I'll call this top bottom pizzas. I'll right click on this, rename. I'll just call this home. Now I'm going to add navigation. I'm going to click here and go to home. Next, I'll come to insert buttons, navigator, page navigator. Here it is. I'll drag it down. We'll come to visual pages show and I'll turn off top bottom pizzas resize it then I'll copy and paste drag it down here and this time I want to show top bottom pizzas I'll come back here let's try to use a different shape under shape Let's try 10% rounded rectangle. Let's see how this looks like. I think I like that better. Let's do the same here. Shape 10% rounded rectangle. I think they look good. Now I'm going to copy and paste this. Just copy and come to the next page and paste it. Go back, select this one, copy go to top bottom pizzas paste i'll come to insert image home i'll drag it over here resize it and drag it over here I'll copy and paste, I'll copy, then I'll come home, click home, then paste it. Here it is. Now we can navigate using the navigation menu. I'll press on control on my keyboard and click on home. And it takes us to home. I'll click on top bottom pizzas and we are back to top bottom pizzas. I'm sure you also notice there is a, a little thing up here on the header on the title. Uh, this is just a scroll bar. It should not affect anything. To remove it, I'll simply click on this to select it and then resize it. I should do it. Now it's gone. I'll go back home, select it, resize it. I think that looks good. Okay guys, so here we are. Now we have our final dashboard. And just to recap where we have come from. And what we have done, we started with uh, our raw data where we had uh, four files containing data from a pizza outlet. And they wanted us to analyze this data to help them uh, see what has been going on in their business and probably make some decisions that will uh, improve their business, make more sales. And we are the ones who are to come up with some questions that are going to help them do this or achieve this goal our first step was to load this data into microsoft sql server we created a database called pizza and we proceeded to load our data into these four tables and then of course we proceeded to run our queries and clean up the data and answer the questions that were required of us and eventually eventually we have presented this data on microsoft power bi now this is these are the same steps that you'd follow in any kind of project i realized that this was just a, a small project our data was not that complicated we had four files we had to use joins these were simple joins in our next video we are going to use a little bit more advanced joins and queries and we're also going to come up with a dashboard that is more interactive a little bit more advanced than what you have today so our project is kind of beginner to intermediate. Please go ahead and like this video. Subscribe to our channel and send it to your friends. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.